Hello, boys and girls. So today we have a special guest and we are having a special meeting today. And our special guest today is Andrew. And Andrew, can you tell us something about yourself? But the most important thing I would like to say at the very beginning that Andrew is my brother in faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, but he's not really actually a member of the denomination I'm from. As you all know, I'm from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And Andrew is from Community of Christ, which also stems from the same root. And that is the, um, the movement of, the Le of Latter-day Saints. So, Andrew, could you tell us something more about yourself? So, I grew up in Lancashire, England, the north of England. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a Roman Catholic family, although my mother had been Church of England mm. before she had to become a Catholic uh, when she married my dad. My dad was a soldier for seven years in World War II. I have three brothers, and uh, I married Jewel, uh, who's from the United States, who grew up in Community of Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, we now live in Leicester, which is in the Midlands. I worked for Community of Christ for, for 18 years. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's your profession, by the way? Outside so I, was of the a, I was a school teacher. Mm -hmm. okay. Like public school? Yes. I trained as a scientist. Uh, these elements like pedagogy, teaching, guiding people have always been of a huge interest to me personally. And I guess it's worth the same for you, right? Yes. Would you say that at this point, teaching is your biggest calling? So I like the fact that Jesus was a teacher. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a soldier. He wasn't a politician. Mm -hmm. He was a teacher. And a teacher is able to give their very best away mm -hmm. and at the same time be enriched by the response of the student. You mentioned Joel, your wife. Uh, as far as I know, you recently celebrated your 44th marriage anniversary, am I right? That's right. Well done. You remember? Uh, yeah, I guess that was a wonderful experience. Uh, what does marriage mean to you uh, personally? And can you tell uh, our viewers the, what marriage is according to the doctrine of the community of Christ? So, yes, I'm happy to answer that question. So... Uh, first of all, I appreciate my parents' marriage. They had it very difficult sometimes, but they were very loyal to each other. Would you say that love is not only feeling, but it's actually what you do? It's commitment, mm. even when you don't have the feeling. So what does uh, marriage mean uh, in Community of Christ? Well, first of all, we think Jesus has a high view of marriage. Mm. And in Community of Christ, we also have a high view of marriage. Mm -hmm. um, it can be a wonderful partnership through life. It can also have many difficulties. So I think there's three levels of marriage. The first one is the personal level where I say to Jewel, I love you. And only Jewel may hear that. When I say I love you before a congregation, and in the presence of a representative from the state to make a legal contract with Jewel, that's a bigger commitment. Um, and then the third level of marriage is to do that before God. That's what makes marriage a sacrament. Mm -hmm. And the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, only the Lord's Supper, as we might call it, uh, is called a sacrament. Uh, where's the idea from to also call marriage a sacrament? What's sacrament for the community of Christ? What does it mean? So um, we have a common language with the LDS Church uh, mm -hmm. of ordinance. Yeah. So I understand ordinance. And that mm -hmm. language of ordinance comes from the Baptists, the Anabaptists. It means mm -hmm. order, ordinance. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so in the last 20 or 30 years, we've started calling ordinances sacraments. Um, so That's very Catholic of you, I'd say. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And it makes a bridge to Catholics. 
makes a bridge to Anglicans. But uh, they're also, uh, they are ordinances. Uh, mm. But they have a sacramental dimension because often we sense the presence of the Holy Spirit there. Are some understandings of marriage in the LDS Church uncomfortable for you? Well, that's a difficult question in the sense that, yes, there is one thing that's really uncomfortable to me, is that there is a, a very, the secular uh, element of marriage has become very much prevalent in the LDS community. Like, I just have a feeling that at times people, like members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, can't really tell the difference between where the secular uh, element of marriage starts and ends and where we actually cross the line and we reach the heavenly element of marriage. The truth is that in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the element of sealing in the marriage, the union between husband and wife, it makes this union complete, something completely different. If I were, if I were to have any influence on like the language of the church, I would even get rid of the word marriage when it comes to the sealing relationship, sealing union between a man and a woman. That would make the picture picture clear that we offer to the world something different than just a secular union, because you know from the earthly perspective, pretty much any relationship between people can be legalized as marriage i mean it doesn't have to be actually a union between a man and a woman and because like we are stuck in this secular discourse of uh, naming of labeling and actually uh, depicting the union between a man and a woman that's sealed in the temple as a marriage in some way secular dimension that poses a risk of there being a lot of criticism uh, around uh, marriage in the obvious church and that maybe something should be changed because the secular world is, the world is also changing. And you know, actually, of course, uh, uh, the church is open uh, to changes in the world, but the Lord Jesus Christ said that his kingdom is not of this world. And uh, it also should be underlined. Mm -hmm. Another element is, of course, like the question of polygamy, but that's a long story. Actually, I will have a separate video on this one. And we had a talk on that, basically, right? Because, again, uh, the so-called Mormon polygamy has been shown as, well, just like, you know, pretty much any polygamy in any culture, uh, to the point that actually when I read the criticism around the Mormon polygamy, I can't really tell the difference between this rendition, this depiction of, of Mormon polygamy and polyamory. I mean, like, it's for me the very same thing when I read the articles of the critics. And uh, it's not. It's not. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> That's one of the differences between the two churches, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. community you've, never had, you've never had polygamy. No, no. Uh, plural really. marriages, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we agree that there's a sacramental dimension to marriage. Mm -hmm. I just mentioned the sealing of the union between a man and a woman in the temple. And I've got a question actually here. Uh, are there special marriage ceremonies held in the temple of the community of Christ when it comes to marriage? No. Oh. Why? The, the only sacraments in the temple are communion. Mm -hmm. and uh, and ordination. Do all men uh, hold priesthood? In um, Christ? All men and women mm -hmm. potentially hold priesthood. Potentially. Is it possible not to be ordained to priesthood at all in the community of Christ? So my mother-in-law, for instance, a very <laughs> wonderful Christian, was mm -hmm. never ordained. Oh. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my best friends in my congregation, Pete, um, served the church 40 years, is not ordained. 